Okay, we have like half a face on. That's okay. She was painting all day. Speaking of painting, lady, let's talk about Drag Race last night. Um, let those hoes have it, please. There is no way. <laughs> there's no way that Candy Muse is in the top four of, of Drag Race this season. There is no way that she could walk out there with an asymmetrical bob and a lattice of pockets and outsing Olivia Lux and make it to the final four. It just that, doesn't it don't compute. The fucking bag she was wearing. <laughs> it was so bad. It's embarrassing. It okay, I can't I can't I mm -mm. You can't I, tell me you can't tell me that she is gonna outlast Denali, Tina Burner, Utica, and Olivia Lux. <laughs> like there's no way that she is good and I'm sorry. I don't get it. Like that like you like like that Bob was it's bad. It's bad. Trash. I saw I saw a meme on Instagram because it had like the pink highlights in it and it was just asymmetrical and cut here. And it was just a picture of her face and it said, Can I please speak to the manager of Chromatica? And I died. I <laughs> <laughs> it was so it was it was disturbed. It was it was just deranged actually. <laughs> that shitty wig is the same shitty wig she's been wearing on the mm -hmm. runway for the last six episodes. She put it on her head after one dyeing it poorly with what yeah. fucking crayons, and <laughs> and then she like that's when she cut it into shape. Because when you look at the back of it, it's like uh, bad hair extensions. Like yeah. you can see the tracks of the wig. There must have been like some sort of desperation though with that. Like, you know what I mean? Like she must have known going into that. She's like, fuck, like I don't have a look put together for those pockets runway. Like, you know what I mean? And she just must have like yeah. hacked at the wig to like So I'm going to tie a bunch of fucking ribbons together mm -hmm. and attach them by buttons and then put this shapeless shift over my hog body and like, Fucking, did you see the peekaboo, the peekaboo to the underwear in the back? I didn't. I the didn't want underwear to. was terrible. It was, it was rough. And like, even when she was lip syncing um, to Strong Enough by Cher, no less, like the dress, even when she was twirling, it just wasn't like, it wasn't moving with her body. Like it was weighted improperly. Like it was just such a bad Everything about it was bad. And I just, I don't understand how the judges keep letting it slide. Like, this is not the first time this has happened. Do you remember her Beast Couture look? What the hell was that? She was wearing a green suit that they wear for special effects. Like, Gollum or Smeagol wore this green suit in Lord of the Rings. She wore that on the runway. And they were like, she's so quirky. And it's like, it was terrible. <laughs> yeah, and she had like a blow-up alien. Yeah, like a Weekend of Journey <laughs> style. Uh, do you know what? The The... The the lip sync where uh, Sasha and they both stayed, that was the day that she should have fucking went home because I agree. She she was out lip synced and By Simone, she deserved yeah. yeah she deserved to go home and then she fucking didn't and now we're left with this trashed a bit. Well, do you know what? It's, it's nice to bitch about it. It's kind of. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is just proof though, like. Like like straight sports, gay sports is also rigged, you know, like drag races, there's producer interference, you know, there's a little bit there. Like I, I I'll give her credit. She is great, she is great reality TV because her confessionals are so like entertaining. She's got she's got a like fun personality to watch, but she's not on the same level as Gottmik or Rose or Simone. Like she's not. <laughs> it's no, just no and way. I, I love Rose in the in the uh I don't know if you watch Untucked. I did not. I didn't watch it this week, but I do watch it usually. Okay, because oh, no. <laughs> Candy Muse had like, like a full panic attack, like Juice Box style panic attack. Oh, um, I just love the Juice. I, yeah, right. Just the thought that she might be lip syncing like sent her heart into like, uh, she had like a like the weird like arrhythmia. Her high, her blood pressure was high, and I'm like, oh my god. Speaking just... of, I'm going to say, I'm just going to go on a quick side rant from this initial side rant. I follow Juicebox on Twitch, and she is a gamer girl. I love it. Mm -hmm. She's great. Did I tell you, I went to college with... Oh, you University. did? Yeah, you mentioned that. I was like, yeah, she's she's super cool. Windsor represent. Yeah. Do you know what, who reminds me of her? Just her voice. Um, they, Juicebox sounds like Gottmik. 
when they do like that that when Gottmik does like that fake like little yeah the, out, the her same. valley girl accent yeah yeah it's yeah it's cute um yeah they're to die for I hope Gottmik wins anyway anyways welcome to the full volume podcast I am your host G.I. <laughs> Joe Lee and as always I am joined by the ever fabulous Harvey Brent. And today we have an epic third episode of Falcon in the Winter Soldier to talk about. Mm-hmm. But speaking of wigs, um, we have a guest. <laughs> speaking of wigs, yes. <laughs> um, a drum, drum roll. Drum roll. Yeah. I feel like it's, his mic is even muted. Okay. <laughs> Jeff McDonald! Hey! How's it going, so, guys? Hey. Very good. We're good. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate being on the podcast, the full volume podcast. Is that, do I do a lot of shouting? Am I, is that the plan? Is it just a lot of ranting? It seems ranty. Is that, is that about right? We, we have a tangent hey. stinger. Yeah. It's a tangent good, button. Good. Yeah. Excellent. Perfect. Yeah. Jolie is out of control. Uh, she thinks about three. She one speaks in first person, third person, third mm. person, third person, third person, third person, and also starts to talk about one thing and then talks about the two other things that are like uh, running concurrently. Uh, so those uh, things. Lots of digressions, lots of sidebars. Mm-hmm. I can get on board. But very good at like steering me. I'm for the most big part. I'm a bit of a wet blanket that way. I'm like, okay, back to the. You know, I try not to be too much of a party pooper, but I am a little type A that way sometimes. I'm sorry. <laughs> Someone's got to take control, and that's you, and that's fine. Yeah. You're going to have to rein me in, because I'm super bad for it, too. I'll be off on tangents all over the place as we're talking about stuff, so feel free to snap me back in place, Brent. I'm okay with that. I mean, as long as we're having fun. I guess that, that yeah. really is the point at the end of the day. Of that's cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so, um, I mean, mm-hmm. it's a weird segue, because I feel like what Jeff does is the drag of the comic book community. Totally. Some so if you, I mean, if you want to talk about what you do, Jeff, <laughs> speaking of uh, legs, yeah, but not so, shitty wigs. So the, the Hellboy shirt and, and, the, and the posters in the back with the Superman and Batman and such. So uh, I am a cosplayer, and you're absolutely right. That is easily the drag of... Uh, it or the clown of or the court jester of it's it's someone dressing up and looking to entertain people and so that's what I do any weekend that I can uh, events birthday parties charitable things comic cons you name it if there's an opportunity for me to put spandex and go in public that's what I'll do so yeah it's uh, I've been doing it for about four years now uh, my handle is Messiah Complex Cosplay which I know seems like I have a giant head uh, because yes. I do. And uh, yeah, you can find me across all social media with that with that particular handle. I'm the only one that has it. It's mine. Yeah, and Jeff has been able to parlay this very brief, like he's like the new girl. Um, suddenly he's gotten in there. He's four years young, and like in the cosmic community, I mean, um, he's like the what's her Val- He's like the Valentina of the cosplay world. Where, you know, there's, like, people who've been cosplaying since the dawn of time. (laughs) Jeff just jumps right in that fucking pool. One, is really good at it. And two, um, is really, (laughs) hasn't been doing it for very long. And, like, you know, has already parlayed it into a small acting career. (laughs) Let's, okay, let's take that down. A few notches. An acting career would assume that I'm being paid for such, and I get to do that full time. And neither of those things is the case. But <laughs> I have been fortunate enough to get into a couple of little <laughs> acting gigs here and there. That was a natural progression from from doing the cosplay stuff. But uh, yeah, you are partly and largely responsible for my rise through the cosplay ranks, Julie. Since we're sitting here having this. This lovely little, uh, I don't know what we want to call this, this, uh, I, you know what, there's something, how, wait a minute, hold on, I gotta ask, what's this rated exactly, like how? You know, I, I, I initially strived for an all ages affair, but, right. you know, 
the f bombs have dropped. You okay. know, so just go for it. I, I think you were sure. gonna say. Were you gonna say circle jerk? A mutual masturbation is where I was going with. <laughs> but basically, yeah, the same thing. While while we're sitting here mutually masturbating each other, the yeah, you inviting me out as a guest to your con to the Action Con in Windsor was the first time I'd been asked to come out as a guest, and that then linked me up with the the guys from Sarny Pop Culture Show, and then that's just it's all kind of taken off from there. So you played a very very big part in getting me where I am. And uh, yeah, so I owe you the world and I've told you, I will hide bodies for you if that's what it comes down to. That's wonderful. Absolutely. And so thank you. As long as you're hiding bodies yes. in that Captain America outfit of yours. Right. You could hide everybody. Oh, uh, you, guys have, you guys have been talking drag race, haven't you? Uh, yeah, seriously. Yeah. Like, like, I don't know, Brent, if you, if you had, Time to look through that Instagram, but find him in his Captain America suit. Get into it. Yeah. So funny thing. Yeah, I, I, I did. No, go ahead. No, bro. go ahead. I was going to say I did. I did quickly look, and I, I saw just the um, the Negan cosplay, and then I think it was the Josh Brolin cable. I might have seen. Was that you? Yeah, that was okay. Um. So yeah, I was like, oh yeah, it's pretty. Got pretty pretty fun range there. Some cool ideas. So yeah, I, but I, I did not. I did range. not. Well, I mean, <laughs> I try to stay in my lane. Grumpy old guy is really where I'm, where I'm going for the most part. The Captain America suit is funny. I lucked into it. A, a friend of mine bought the suit for himself and then spent six months laying in bed eating cheese buns and couldn't fit into it anymore uh -oh. and gave me a call. And he was like, come on over, try it on. If it fits, you can have it for X amount of dollars. And I was like, OK, I never even thought about doing cap before that. And yeah, I went over to his place and tried it on, fit OK. And I gave him cash on the spot and I walked out. That's Captain America, and that's that's how that kind of started. That's so yeah, yeah, fun wow. stuff. Well, that's a fun little segue because I feel like we're going to be talking about Captain America actually a fair bit today. I mean, you know, within reason. Obviously, we're here sure. to talk Falcon and Winter Soldier, but uh, Captain America is certainly on my mind uh, these days with this latest episode. Um, yeah, I don't know. Did we want to get into it, Jolie, or? Um, I mean, if we want to do a brief recap, I'll do a brief recap and then we could just slide right on in. Go. You you do the brief okay. recap. You do the, the narrative foreplay and okay. we'll work so, from there. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. The shortest, shortest answer is Falcon and the Winter Soldier bust Baron Zemo out of the clink and then they <clears throat> drag that big dick energy out to the club and then the story mm. goes from there seriously that's a great buzzword actually for this episode i was thinking that initially i was like this has a lot of masculine male energy this series i've realized that after watching this episode <laughs> and it wasn't until they introduced sharon card i'm like oh that's that's what's been missing is like a feminine yeah. you know pr uh what's the word presence on the show and even then i don't hey. think she's fully fulfilling that yet but it's it's very it's very masculine the show <laughs> i would argue that her dick is the biggest yeah that's the thing where i'm like i was like when she got introduced this episode i was like oh okay finally we're gonna have i don't want to sound sexist but like more of a gentler perspective but she's 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 not awful per se but she's just hard she's hard you know so it's just i, I she did not satisfy the my needs in that respect um I just, I, it's a very, yeah, very high hardened energy show. Yeah. That's what it is. And I realized that's what that's been kind of like, not throwing me off, but like I, we talked about this last week about coming from WandaVision to Falcon and the Winter Soldier. And the two vibes are so different. And I think it has to do with the lack of female representation, perhaps, in this show. Not, I'm not like saying it's a bad thing. It's just, it's such a different vibe to digest. Yeah. And you're caught up, right, Jeff? No, I, I am about halfway through the third episode now. But again, do not, yeah, it's whether, no, 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 go, man. I, I, that's my bad. You told me to just watch the last episode. And I'm like, well, fuck that. I'm doing that. Like, I have to watch, like, all of it. Like, I got some context, like, just jumping in. Mm -hmm. So I'm all the way through the first. I'm all the way through the second. And the big dick energy is happening literally right now in the show. Like, they're at the club. Bucky just beat the hell out of some dude. And yeah. that's that's where I'm at right now. So, yeah. But yeah, spoiler alert. Yeah, go. Yeah, don't yeah, yes. pretend I've seen it all. I'll speak more in generalities about the show, and then you guys can get into the, the nitty gritty on. Yeah. Did you watch uh, WandaVision? I did. Okay, sweet. So at yeah. least you can level with us on that one. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm fully caught up on everything Marvel except for the last 20 some odd minutes of the latest episode of Winter Soldier. So, yeah. Oh, 
okay. So do you know what? I'm just going to read straight from um, vulture.com. Yep. Uh, the, to, so we'll do now like a bigger, uh, a bigger, more, help me out here. <laughs> I, uh, you don't even know what I'm trying to say. No, 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 I'm, no, I'm trying to throw you a lifeline and I can't think of what it's going to be. <laughs> right. It's, uh, we'll, we'll try to you're going to speak about um, it more on a grand scale as opposed to like the microcosm of just the episode. Is that what you mean? Like you're going to. Oh, no. I was just going to go through the episode. What happened in this episode? Do oh, you yeah. Do it. I spoil the last half. You're good. No, do, ever, do it all. Okay. You've already told me Sharon Carter's going to show up and she's not on yet. So you're already there. Oh. Man. You're good. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So thank you, Vulture.com writer. I don't know your name, um, but they recap this episode for us, which is nice. fantastic. So yeah. we got to the part where we've gotten to the part where yeah. they are. Sorry, where? They're in Madripoor. Yes. That's Club. it. Yeah, and um, Easter Easter egg. Here's our first tangent. Madripoor is first. actually <laughs> <laughs> where they go to meet Selby, the woman who's in the club. Uh, let's see. Oh, it has in the to. Club. Yeah, it's from the uh, let's see, la, 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 la. they She's... are a member of the Mutant Liberation Front. Mm -hmm. So you know all that speculating that everyone fucking did during Wandavision about how this is how they're gonna bring the X universe into Marvel. I'm like, are we sure <clears throat> that the Falcon and the Winter Soldier isn't gonna be how they do it because? Every freaking Easter egg about this episode has to do with like X Men, the the X Men universe. Yeah, totally. <laughs> so, okay. So, anyways, and then also Selby, their character being a male, it's nice to see that they changed it and no one freaked out about it because we all know how the internet likes to have a good meltdown. Mm -hmm. But it seems like the usual uh, parcel of incels isn't watching this one. <laughs> So <laughs> it's so weird. It feels like it's made for them, like the high right. masculine energy. That's weird. <laughs> Nothing for them to criticize. They just haven't caught up yet. They'll, they're there. They're just laying. Okay. In yeah. yeah. <laughs> they want to get a few episodes under their belt, so they have a lot to bitch about all at once. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure that they had something to say about Sharon getting all the fight action. Who knows? I, um, that's a good point. Yeah. She. Sorry. Go ahead. No, uh, I was going to go on another tangent. But I, but I digress, and we'll go on. Okay, so let's see here. Uh, so they, Selby immediately gets shot, and she suddenly does. somebody's phone rings, and they are immediately put on a watch list. Uh, Falcon, Winter Soldier, and Baron Zemo, which means that whoever shot Selby is watching them. Da, da, da. And let's see. Cut so, to Latvia. What? And they and they went to Madripoor to find out who is manufacturing this super soldier serum. We should preface it with that. That is important. Yes, that's right. Because why uh why break out, you know, why bust Zemo out of the clink? Which yeah. is one of the best parts of the show. Anyway. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um we also find out that uh Baron Zemo is like loaded. Like unimaginably well, he, loaded. He is a baron. Yeah. He's like, uh, my family, you know, we're barons. We were rich before you put me in prison. <laughs> yeah. Just so matter of factly. <laughs> he's like, look at my five rules voices. <laughs> I know. Like I universe. hide I hide my Zemo mask in the yellow one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like how he quickly went home to get it. Uh, it's it's a whole brand. It's a whole vibe. Right? And the, yeah, I just, Jolie, I'm so glad. Mm. Do they go to Latvia or do they go to Latveria? It says Latvia in this article, but I it feel does. like it probably no, it, is Latveria. No, they go to Latvia. They do go to Latvia? Do okay. Yeah, they go mm -hmm. to uh, the capital, which starts with an R, and I can't remember. Riga? I okay. That's the capital. Okay. I apologize to yeah. all the Latvians listening. No, 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 yeah. you're right. I'm looking at it now. It is Riga. <laughs> I just, it would have been a nice little Easter egg if they got to Latveria instead, but I wasn't sure. Right. Yeah. I, I think we should touch upon that too, because I know Vulture does, but I, I digress. Nope. That's all mm. good. No, no, cut in. Frey, continue. Well, I was going to say, 
Um, it's either uh, Vulture, actually, it might have been IGN. I think it was IGN. Um, it probably makes more sense to talk about this after we talk about Vulture, but IGN was speculating on who the power broker is because we don't know the identity of this power broker that, yeah. you know, is apparently based at a Magipur and is kind of behind this, um, you know, re refunding this um, super soldier serum. Um, and so one of the uh, guesses was actually Victor Von Doom. Um, oh. there's, a couple, there's a couple of other uh, interesting guesses of who they think the power broker is, but <clears throat> we can get into more of that in a minute. Did we okay. learn nothing from WandaVision? Honestly, yeah. when it comes to <laughs> giant cameos waiting in the wing that don't happen, did we not? <sighs> yeah, I know. I, I have I have some thoughts on WandaVision if you want to get into that at some point, too. Boy, <laughs> do I have some thoughts on WandaVision. But anyways, continue. Well, there's, okay, usually cool. like a ten, there's usually like a 10 minute period of every full volume episode where we just talk about Evan Peters, uh, who played Quicksilver. <laughs> oh, so there's... oh, I'm so mad. I'm oh, same, so mad. Same, man. I'm okay, so mad. So okay. let's just <laughs> pause. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Put a pin in this that one. conversation about Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Yes, yeah, sorry. Continue. And listen to Jeff's thoughts about oh. Evan Peters. <laughs> so I'm here for it. Oh. <laughs> It seems like, I don't, maybe it's just me, I don't know, but it seems like the whole time that Fox's X-Men were a thing, of course, it was sort of in competition with Marvel, even though they were there first. X-Men came out in 2000, and the MCU wasn't really created until 2008. But now that they own Fox's X-Men, you would think it would mean that they would foster some goodwill, that they would use that brand that they now own to, to build it up, continue to make some money off it. And I know they want to make it their own, but to bring in Evan Peters and to tease him as Pietro, as Quicksilver. So first it looks like he's just an alternate version of her actual brother from the MCU, probably because they couldn't get Aaron Taylor Johnson for whatever reason. And then you're thinking, okay, no, maybe he is actually Peter from the X-Men movies, from Fox. They own that now. They can do that. And at the end, he's a dude named Ralph Boner. And it just seems like Marvel decided to take one last steaming turd on the face of Fox's X-Men when this totally. guy turns out to be nobody and nothing. And it's such, it's not just a blown opportunity. If that's all it was, then who cares? You blew it. That's fine. But when it seems like it's such a giant last fuck you to Fox for being first with their universe before Marvel got in there and then competing between the two, even though Marvel was trouncing them anyways when Marvel finally got on the scene. I don't know, man. Does it not seem like you're kicking the guys when they're down? Could we not have had it so he was one or the other and not just this third thing that was nothing and ultimately completely disappointing? Is it me? Am I alone? I don't know. What do you guys you're think? You're not alone. Okay. I I was also pissed off about it. I wonder if it was them also being salty because Days of Future Past had a better Quicksilver than Avengers Age of Ultron. Oh, way better Quicksilver. Oh, way better. Yeah. It's so much better that you get to live and be yeah. in more movies <laughs> and have the only good part of Apocalypse, really. So, oh, God. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> they were, yeah. Okay. I think they're definitely salty, but yeah. You could be so salty, but does it mean that we've got to like piss in their face on the corpse of what used to be a, a whole damn movie franchise with, with how they treated that character? Yeah. It's just so bad. I mean, to be just, fair, Fox Fox pissed on their own franchise first by not following half the true, movies. True, true. Yeah, the continuity but, jokes, but uh, but yeah, Evan Peters Quicksilver was still one of the shining lights in that in yes. that universe, right? Like even in some of the poorer films like Apocalypse his stuff was still fantastic and that character was still amazing across the films that he was in. So why, I don't know, man, why do that? If you can't get Aaron Taylor Johnson, then just, and you're just going to make him be some dude, just, just throw some dude in there. Don't yeah. tease us all with that. And then ultimately yank it out from under us mm -hmm. and then point at us and laugh because we all fell for it. Like, come on, man. Yeah. Well, our hope, our hope is that he is the, uh, up until now, faceless. Uh, sorry, Nameless what is person the person that Jimmy Wu was looking for? That's it. What oh. do they call it when they hide this protection program? Yeah, he was in witness Bam. protection. Yeah. yeah, sorry, I had to work today, and like last minute Easter shoppers are terrible, so my brain doesn't work. Um, and and paint fumes also. <laughs> so yeah, like my hope and the. the uh, the speculation that we're kind of going through is that hopefully he's because Ralph Boner is a ridiculous name. 
Right. And it seems like Rolf Boner could be a very fake name for somebody who is in witness protection. I'm such a child. Every time you say Boner, I'm laughing. I'm sorry. I'm such a kid. <laughs> and, I, and I honestly cannot say Ralph without saying Boner because right. I also am six. And I... <laughs> such a funny name it's a it's great stupid name. Yeah. but it's great so yeah. yeah um our hope and what we talked mm. about a couple episodes ago when one division ended was that mm. he is revealed to be uh the witness protection uh sorry pietro from a different universe timeline under witness protection right and it would be amazing. And then right. the X Men come in and save the day. And right. I'm sick of the Avengers. <laughs> I just want, I just want like mutants. I really right. just want. Mutants. I want mutants versus Avengers. I want X Men versus Avengers. Right? How do you not do that if you're Marvel? That's money in the bank. You would think, I right? That, I mean, they did it in the comics twice. Like you would think you could do it. Yeah, I hope, really hope that that's what they're building up to. That's now, their do you next want, phase movie. Yeah, now do you want to see them try to incorporate like a, like a Patrick, like do you want to see them incorporate any of the Fox stuff or do you want them to just completely wipe the slate clean and start brand new and fresh? Small doses. I think yeah. I want like acknowledgement of multiverse. Kind of like how they did in Days of Future Past where young Xavier met old Xavier. Right. Small, mm -hmm. small little ties here, but I would like a new cast just for longevity's sake, I think. Right. Okay. So yeah. even like the first class cast, like you're that's not you wouldn't oh. want to see any of them reprise other than Jennifer Lawrence, obviously, who's not gonna have anything to do with it, but like anybody else that kind of got involved in that, like like a Fastbender or a McAvoy or even like a Nicholas Holt or or any of the other like good new young actors that could come in and no, I no. I'm not I, selling you on it, Brent. Not selling you. I can see that look I, in your face. I don't even know no, you. You're I, like, no, no, I'm selling this turd. This is McAvoy not McAvoy and me. Fassbender, for sure. But I also, right. I don't want to enable them to continue to focus on those two characters. That's my hangout. Because okay. <laughs> nope. nope. we need you're more right. of a, a family introspection into the X-Men. You know, we need more about Cyclops. And they tried to do it in, the, you know, the newer first class movies. They tried right. to give you more Cyclops and Jean. But we need, we need like a proper start of that now. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So then if you I, do that, then how do you bring how do you bring Wade Wilson? How do you bring Deadpool in? Leave it be Ryan Reynolds because you have to. And yeah, then still to. then recast everybody else. What, what I do feel you like do? He, he can get away with that though, because of the fourth wall. Like he's gonna totally talk about that in the next Deadpool movie. Right. <laughs> like I don't even know who you are anymore. I don't even recognize you. Yeah, I could I yeah. could yeah, I could see that. <laughs> I mean, you he brought the see... Green Lantern into right. the, the, the Marvel yes. universe. He yeah, can do no, anything. It's true. It's true. <laughs> Sorry, you were you were asking. No, question, do, you, do you? Is that something that you guys would like to see moving forward? With I know you're talking about you want to see something other than the Avengers, but is that something that you would want to see where where Wade is essentially interacting with guys like Bucky or or Wanda or Tony, and not Tony, obviously, rest in peace, Tony. Stephen Strange, is that something that you think can work, that they can find a way to make those universes mesh together and, and work moving forward? Yeah. Yeah, I, I think that. under proper care of the story, I think with certain supervision, they can pull it off and input from people that are close to it, like Ryan Reynolds. Mm -hmm. I think he's going to need to bring his comedy and, you know, make it coalesce with the, the MCU. But I think mm -hmm. he'll have a heavy hand in that. Yeah. And and maybe not do um, maybe not so quickly bring in Taika Waititi. Like I feel like the the levels of comedy would clash. Right. Like they're different. But I uh, if you brought in um, oh I'm sorry to these two directors I don't remember your names, but the Russo's. two gentlemen. Yeah, the Russo. Oh, the Russos. Brothers. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think the level of action that the Russos are delivering could work with what's happening with Deadpool if you brought the two together. Like, right. yeah. Okay. And then, well, who knows? I mean, it's it's, it's movies, right? Yeah. They'll make it work, and we'll still watch it, and it'll, yeah. be, it'll be fine. <laughs> We're going to watch it regardless. Yeah, or, or like, it won't be fine. We'll still watch it, and then we'll just have, like, more to bitch about, so. Mm -hmm. That's true. All right, sorry, guys. That was a giant aggression. Brent, okay. you really dropped okay. the ball on keeping us on, on pace here. I, 
on I'm topic. trying not to be that person. That's the thing. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm ashamed of that nature of mine. So I, I let these tangents roll now. <laughs> all right. All right. Fair enough. <laughs> okay. So where were we? Oh, they were in the club and then Selby gets shot. Yes. And then they run out of the club because now they're suddenly on a watch list. Oh, yes. we were debating just... who the power broker might be. That's what we were. That's how we got that's... off on the tangent. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. Cue John Wick uh... action scene. Right. <laughs> John Wick yeah. style action scene where they run into Sharon Carter, who has been off the grid and living here in Madripoor, uh, Madripoor since Civil War, uh, because she is still a wanted fugitive. <laughs> Which is a long time when you think about it. Like Civil War was five years ago, so she's been she's been hanging out in tropical Madripoor for a while. Yeah, and like Sam asks her all the time, like, so you really don't want to move back to the United States? And she's like. Nah, I'm good. Well, she's also like, I'm pretty sure that they want my head. So they're like, there's no extradition here in Madripoor. So I'm going to hang out in Madripoor for a while. So like everybody yeah. gets a pardon but Sharon Carter? Is that, like, well, how is that? Are, if you're going to bring us down that rabbit hole about how women are treated differently, <laughs> we'll, we'll go there. <laughs> because I just, it, I'm not, they, it, they, they made a big it, deal about the fact that these, they, they both got pardoned. So why hasn't she gotten a pardon? They actually bring that up in the episode. That oh, Buffy they do? Started. Yeah. <laughs> and they don't they don't quite hold the mirror to the sexism of it but i picked up on it and you picked right. up on it now just now that why yeah. wasn't sharon carter pardoned but bucky yeah. was Ridiculous. sounds mm -hmm. like some male privilege huh. <laughs> <laughs> sorry it all boils down it really does all boil down to who has the biggest dick yeah, although I guess if the CIA truly knew, I think they would vote Sharon Carter because she whoops ass this episode. <laughs> oh, so maybe because Bucky fought in the Infinity War in the Endgame and then and Sharon didn't. Like, is that what earned him the pardon type of thing? And then she was obviously still in Magic War during that the events, or is that perhaps. the supposition? Okay, that's that, not discussed perhaps. in the episode though. Mm -hmm. uh, not to my recollection. No. Yeah. It's just pointed out that she doesn't get a pardon, but Bucky did. Yes. Yeah. yeah. White dudes, man. White dudes. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and we're the worst. and we are. He shel he went and sheltered himself too in like the condo. Right. Yeah. That. Speaking yes. of despicable things that white dudes do. <laughs> Seriously. Sorry, right? Jeff. Seriously. No, 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 no. We're terrible. I agree. <laughs> I didn't really pick up on that till now, but yeah, the the implications of that are like. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A little social commentary there. A little bit. A little bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Jolie. Oh. So the, the main thing is that they offer to cl help clear her name if she helps them. Oh. So she's like, yeah, and she uh, she Tit for immediately, tat, <laughs> exactly. And I, I think she's like, at this point, she doesn't care either way and is like going to help them anyway. Um, I think it's just nice to see old friends. At this I point. think she just has nothing else better to do. She's like, I might as well. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, right. I did make out with Steve and you guys are kind of continuing his work. So maybe I should do that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I did make out with Steve. Yeah. Weird. That one time it was, it was weird. <laughs> <laughs> he was dating my grandma and it yeah, just got weird. Yeah. weird. Yeah. <laughs> and then I saw him in the in the hospital where she died and it was really weird. Anyway. Yeah, he's crying over her right at like my lipstick is still on his cheek. And yeah, that's that's bizarre. Yeah. I mean I mean they didn't address it, but they <laughs> The, the level of awkward right? that that created. Yeah, a little I remember, bit. Yeah, I remember going, ooh, ooh. Yeah. Like, uh, anyway. Because it was, okay, it's, so. it's, it's, it's oh. the, it was an aunt and niece thing, right? Like, there was that wasn't Peggy's daughter. It was Peggy's niece, no? Isn't that who Sharon is? Isn't Sharon is her niece, not her I daughter? I thought it was her granddaughter. Or her I could granddaughter? I thought it was a, I didn't think they were direct. Because then Steve went back and married Peggy. So wouldn't that make Sharon possibly ooh. I know. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Well, maybe we'll, we'll, we'll Google that later. You go ahead. Continue on with your... I'm going to stop talking. Okay. There's... Okay, so there's... <laughs> there's some monologuing. Jesus Christ. There's a lot. Okay. And... Okay, so she takes them to this train yard, uh, this shipping container yard, uh, that she has intel about. Uh, she says that the doctor who created the super soldier serum is hiding here somewhere. And Dr. Zemo Nagel. has the same. 
that's it. Zemo has the same intel, and he's like, yeah, I feel like she's right. Um, Zemo's like, oh my god, yeah, I heard the same thing, which we should go. (laughs) So weird. (laughs) I'm a villain, you're not a villain, but same intel. Same intel. Um, so let's see. Like this whole time, he's uh, he's playing like he's help being helpful, but I feel I get the they they lose track of him not a lot, but like a couple of times. Mm-hmm. Um, like when they start getting shot up, Bucky immediately is like, "Where's Zemo?" And he's not anywhere to be found. He left like five seconds before the shooting started. Like he could feel it in his bones. He's like, <laughs> fight, "Fight scene activated." Runs away. <laughs> <laughs> Player four exits. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So he. So they find. They they go into one of the shipping containers. It appears to be empty. Um, it has, like most shipping containers do, a secret compartment leading up Ooh, to another. A false, a false back. Yeah. Of course. A false back nice. into another shipping container where they find Doctor Nagel, who does all the monologuing. He tells them what uh, what is up. He is the one who rebuilt the super serum and he made 20 vials of it. And, and I'm assuming those are the vials that were stolen by Carly. The super soldier. Um, I believe she stole, was it eight? I don't know if she stole all 20. They didn't specify. Okay. But okay. there's at least eight super soldiers on the run. So I'm going to assume she stole eight of the 20. Mm-hmm. But most importantly, this work was financed by said power broker. Mm. Yes. The plot thickens. Yep. So, okay. Yes. Yep. So as the bounty hunters in town descend on their location, uh, with Sharon outside fighting all of them. Protecting off. the perimeter, like, yeah. Every fucking person goes into the shipping container except for Sharon. Mm-hmm. But it's okay, because Sharon's got this. She lays them all out. It's hilarious. She does. Was that her amazing. first was that her first major action action scene in the MCU? I uh, to, at the, of this level, I think so. Okay, that's what I was kind of picking up on too. Like, I don't think I've ever seen her. Maybe like a couple gunshots, you know, in like Civil War or something. I don't think I've ever mm. seen her whoop butt like this. So that was that kind of like I made a mental note of that. So for the oh, viewers, yeah. this might be her first major action scene. And mm-hmm. it was it was fair enough. It was you know entertaining enough. It was good. Mm-hmm. It, was, a it was non super powered person. It was definitely worth the three months prior to any Marvel property filming boot camp that they have. Definitely oh, worth it. Yes. Very very believable. Okay. <laughs> so this is so this is what the this is what how the article continues. Because I can't recall this to save my life ever. And okay, so Zemo shoots the doctor. Yeah, I didn't get then, why. Yeah. And it turns out one of the bad guys brings a rocket launcher. Uh, Zemo escapes after he puts on his cool mask. Yep. <laughs> he gets villainous and then just like <laughs> slips away. Yep. He returns to Sam, Sharon, and Bucky, but she can't leave Madripoor. But I don't know Zemo- why. Yeah. Yeah. They don't specify. I have theories, but I'm going to hold off on that. Um, yeah. But. Zemo, Bucky, and Sam drive away from this whole action scene with this new intel in mind that, you know, the, the power broker financed the super soldier serum, Carly's super soldier stole said serum, and now they're on their way to Latvia. Not yeah. Latveria, Latvia. Yeah, he sneaks, it turns out he doesn't sneak away to get away from the fighting. He sneaks away to get one of his fancy cars. Yes. So he can drive them all away from the action, like away from the danger. I just, I just imagine he has like so many like Rolls Royces set up all over Madripoor, and just like a ring of keys for like, okay, <laughs> like it was like so a con- jailer. Yeah, like a jailer, but the entire city of Madripoor has his, his beamers and his Rolls Royce around, just perfect at right. his disposal. <laughs> yeah, so they they finally uh, they're walking down a street, the three of them. So Bucky, yes. Falcon. And Zemo, and then in but Bucky hmm? in Latvia, in Latvia. In now Latvia, that they're okay. In Latvia, it, they drove there. They, you they can drive there from Madripoor, which isn't Madripoor an island? It is. <laughs> okay, okay. I, I mean, <laughs> the land bridge of some kind, I guess it's possible. A trip. Yep. Yeah, 
he also Zemo also has private jets lying around Madripoor. Yes. Um, maybe he drove them to one of his private jets. I assume. Um, so yeah, he uh, la, 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 la. they're they're sorry, they're all together, and then Bucky is like I'll catch up with you. And he gets all like shady and weird. Mm -hmm. Uh he sneaks off and it seems as though he sees like a beacon on one of the buildings in an alleyway, and wouldn't you know, he runs into Ayo. From Wakanda. From Wakanda. Okay. And she's like, I'm here for Zemo. And then cut. Da -da -da. I was going to be like, girl, we're all here for Zemo. He's a stud, first of all. <laughs> like, <laughs> Daniel Brule is the shit. He's, he's right? yeah. And I even love he dropped, like, the Tony line or the Bruce Wayne line at the beginning of the movie. And and because Falcon was like, or the beginning of the show, Falcon's like, you're rich? He's like, I'm a baron. Like, what do you mean? I'm like, of course I'm royalty before yeah. you people got involved and put me in jail. Yeah. No one froze his yeah. assets, man. He was just like, yeah, I just got out of jail five minutes ago. I got my pimp-ass plane waiting on the runway there with my old as fuck butler. Let's get up in the sky and have some champagne, and you guys can have the the, the food that's gone over, because I'm gonna get the good shit. The sh the champagne was great. I don't know how he's not eating caviar, you know, I, I, as they're flying through the sky, just to to show how obscenely rich being a baron is. So, I was like shocked. What? Okay, and then he steps up. Speaking of being obscenely rich, then he steps up to the club, <laughs> and is like, "I'll have my usual." <laughs> And the bartender What's that a is like, snake? Yes! They what? open the... <laughs> what? <laughs> I, I, I'm like, what's even happening right now? Brent has lived with two bartenders. I, too, have bartended, and I've never <laughs> heard of this cocktail. Come on. Was it snake venom, I'm guessing? Was it, like, it, like, like yeah, venomous? But it, it, yeah, but he cut it, like, out of, the like, the body of the snake. It's not like they milked the snake. They, like... Yeah. It, it was like somewhere in the snake's ass that they took. Like, I don't even know. It was so, <laughs> it was they, so weird. He yeah. opens this up just because he's got this. This is how this is how fucking rich he is. Right. It's been 10 years since <laughs> he's been in this bar and they still got a snake back. They still they keep preserved. a live snake. So yeah. just in case. Listen, the Baron might be back. Keep that fucking snake alive because he's going to want to drink when he gets here. He's going to want that snake's milk, like, stat. Like, in his drink. immediately. <laughs> they, yeah, so they slit, they, slit its, they slit its front bum open and they, like, right. maybe pull out its organs and drop it into two shots of, like, yeah. I don't know, fucking whiskey? <laughs> yeah. The look on Sam's face as he looked over at Baron was, uh, that was, that was, he was the audience in on that moment because he was just all like, what in the fuck? Yeah. Is that it was yeah. so good. And he's the one that ends up drinking it. And right. just like his reaction to doing the shot, he's just like thumbs mm. up. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then yeah. and then he it's just, just like it. a, a very yeah. weak thumbs up. Yeah, like right. I hate that I have to like affirm this, but that's right. Okay. I'm in character. <laughs> yes, this is delicious. Mm -hmm. This isn't yeah, weird so at all. So if anyone out there has ever had a shot just like this, let us know. That's fullvolumepod at gmail.com. Please just tell us. We need we need the mystery to be solved. Maybe it's like um like a Sokovian thing. But keep keep know. your keep your identity anonymous because because PETA is gonna be all over you for this. You can't mm -hmm. yes. Make sure that whoever that is that comes forward stays anonymous. I mean, what if the snake was already dead? It looked pretty I get good to me. Oh, did it? Oh, it, okay. It looked like it was in a preserve, like some sort of alcoholic oh, preserve, oh, oh. Right. which still, I, to me, doesn't make it any more appealing. No. <laughs> so, no. No. K kind of a little bit less, actually. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. 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 It's, oh, it's yeah. just been sitting there. It's been yeah. dead for longer than I feel. Yeah. Like, who knows? Yeah. And like, okay, like, can we just talk about how he just dropped, like, he's just like, boom, like it's nothing. He's like, this is my favorite drink. Bam. <laughs> and then I immediately was like, good thing I brought these extra panties to the show. Yeah. Like, Jesus When in Madripoor, what are you going to do, right? Speaking of Madripoor, we should yeah. talk about it because I feel like we should actually touch on the fact that, you know, we already said that Madripoor has a lot of X-Men connections. Mm, let's, let's unpack that for a second. So we know um, at least Madripoor, I think it was introduced um, during New Mutants run. Uh, back in the mid 80s, yes. 1985. Yeah. 
And so uh, Wolverine has a very big affinity with Magipore. The X-Men are believed to be dead during this time. Um, Wolverine goes there under the guise of a different superhero named Patch. Do you want to know what they call him, Patch? <laughs> no, please, enlighten us, Brent. Mm. He's wearing an eye patch over one Arr, eye. He sure so, is, matey. Which, you know what, is great, because they say it's like, um, it's, you know, it was initially a pirate colony, so I thought it was a kind of a cute callback like for, for Logan nice. to make in the 80s. No one um, will recognize him. He's got an eye patch on. It's the perfect disguise. So devious. Um, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. so I so I know Magipore a little bit from, from X-Men, um, this is not how I remember it being. Um, it to me, it looks like like Seoul or Tokyo. You know, it's got like this very like um, cyberpunk vibe to it in the way that the show presented to to, to us. I remember Magipore being a lot more jungleistic, if that's a word. Yep. Like it, it was um, just a little more not. I don't want to say archaic, but it was just a little less developed, a little more um... rice patties and uh, stilted huts. Sure. Yeah. Maybe a little, little bit above that, but there was, there was a very strong religious presence, um, mm. but oh. like in like a worshiping sense, like temples and stuff and, you know, jungle imagery. Um, so this is kind of a shock to my system to see Magipore being, you know, basically Tokyo or Seoul or what I imagine those cities to be like. This is what I find that the MCU does very, very well and have, has done pretty much right from the start is, is they'll take a familiar element like that, maybe in name only or whatever, they'll put their own modern twist to it. So they're still paying lip service to to the source material and what's come before, but they're not a, they're not kind of slaves to that. They will they will modernize it or update it or or change it completely if it fits whatever the aesthetic is for that particular thing or that particular story. So as a fan, you get to be like, oh, that's yeah, I know that from the comics. But then Marvel gets to be like, well, you kind of do, but this is our take on it. So it's a nod to you guys so the fans don't get rabid and mad at us because here you go, you get this, but you're going to get it the way we want to do it. So we don't want to be handcuffed by all of the source, but at the same time, we want to give you guys a little bit of fan service by saying, hey, this is Magipore. And They're I think very, they got, very good at that. I think they got the general mm -hmm. vibe of Magipore right too because it did kind of feel like a, a port city, you know, like where pirates would have gathered back in the day and you still kind right. of got that vibe from mm -hmm. the, the clientele in the bar and stuff that there was a lot of like transients and expats going through that bar it, it almost felt like you know in um i apologize my my star wars knowledge isn't that great but it felt like the canteen uh -huh. canteen scene you know a little bit in in star wars where it's just kind of like that area where <laughs> you know people are congregating from, from across the galaxy and sure. whatnot i kind of yeah. that was kind of what i took away from Madripoor as a comic mm -hmm. fan and i think it translated decently enough right into mm -hmm. what we see yeah. here like a crossroads like a trade port type of thing yeah. thank you yeah. yes sure. yes yeah yeah, yeah, no, that's good. I mean, and it definitely works too because um, you go there and you uh, you expect to see certain faces. Clearly, people know who Zemo is there. A lot of people with guns know who Zemo is. Do you see all the side pimping. eyes? Yeah, man. Yeah. So, and then um, you know, you have everybody from your like you know hot dog vendor to your very big crime boss all hanging out in this joint and I, I like i think i like that vibe a lot hmm. so yeah totally so but they leave madripoor and they go to latvia so is there an indication do you guys think or hope that we're going to get back to madripoor and explore that a little bit further and, and and piece some of that out or do you think we're all done with that now i have a hunch we're not going to go back but i i can't exactly explain why i feel like it, it served as a plot device to bring all of these traveling people together gotcha but i I, I don't, but I'm not saying it won't come back in a different MCU property, but for some reason, I have a hunch we won't go back there okay. in, in this series. Nope, I don't either. know, it's just a hunch. Because yeah, this one's I only guess. six episodes, right? Like, this one's much shorter, yeah. right? Okay. Yeah, so and I don't to... think that, I don't know that Sharon, I feel like Sharon's story is like, it was very brief, but it's like, it's done. <laughs> oh. I disagree. Oh, I, yeah? I have a heavy suspicion, and I don't know why. It's just, it, this isn't so much comics knowledge as it is maybe cinema knowledge and writing knowledge. They kept pointing out that the power broker was a he. Whoever he is, whoever, you know, him, the power broker, I work for him. Mm -hmm. I have a suspicion that Sharon Carter may be the power broker. Ooh, that's a hot take. And I, I the reason I'm thinking that is, oh. first of all, just from the writing, just the, the, the insistence that it's a him. Mm -hmm. But second, I she seemed fairly well established in Madripoor, like that nice ass apartment she had. And she 
she hasn't said it, but I feel like she's in some sort of position of power there. The and ceilings were so high. They were ornate, <laughs> Jolie. They were ornate. And nothing Finial. says big pimp in like high ceilings. Yeah. 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 Uh, by the so way, that. just to, just to clear it up, it, it is great niece is is what Sharon Carter is great for Peggy niece. Carter. Oh. It is great niece, not granddaughter. So okay. thank yeah. you for that one. No, yeah, I no mean, problem. Uh, there isn't that anything. would be weird. That doesn't make it any less more. weird. <laughs> it makes it a little bit less weird, but it certainly doesn't make it not weird. That's for yeah. Sure. <laughs> well, hey, there isn't things, there isn't anything that people love more than to correct the comic book syndicate <laughs> on every fucking thing we get wrong. And hey, we're here for it too. No, no, no. We that are... was not a correction. I didn't know either. I wanted to know too. That wasn't like, oh, guys, yeah. I'm sorry, I, I, have to, I have to break this to you, but actually, <laughs> she is the great niece of yeah. Peggy Carter, not. Yeah, that's not what I'm after. I didn't know either. But that's oh, my hot that's my hot take though. That I, is I a hot take. I don't think we're gonna go back to Maj Rapport, but I think mm -hmm. Sharon Carter, there's something going, but I don't have a motive yet. I'm just basing this off cinematic writing and the insistence that it was a him. Gotcha. And the fact that sometimes I don't know who called those guards on them, you know, to surround them. I'm wondering if that was a ploy. So I just there's a couple things that aren't adding up and I'm just a little little confused. Mm-hmm. And it would make total sense if she was the power broker because she was outside while they were talking to Selby. Selby gets shot. We don't know who shoots them. Yeah. And suddenly, when they race outside to get away from all of the violence, Sharon is outside. So random. To rescue them. <laughs> okay. Pa power broker. Identity of the power broker confirmed. You heard it here first. It's Sharon Carter. <laughs> what t-shirts um, we made, I, we're there, we're on board. Right? I mean, yep. you can't just go from great-grandniece of Peggy Carter, mm. uh, super dowdy, like really sensible basic bitch outfits to full leather, mm -hmm. all black everything. Right. Yeah. The, yep. the, the hints are everywhere, everybody. The hints yeah. are everywhere. I okay. the more we're talking about this, the more I'm actually sold on it now. <laughs> Me too. I'm in. I'm in. I love it. So there, there's something else too that I mean, it's not really super relevant, but they call Sam. Sam, when he goes into the meeting, is called the smiling tiger. Isn't that precious? Yes. Right. <laughs> One, she Selby growls at him, which is kind of cute too, because I mean I wish I had the, that kind of balls to just like growl at every man I found attractive. You can do um, that. Yeah. You don't need balls uh, for that. You can 100% do that. I could. You but could. I, I also just don't want to like sexually harass every man I meet. Fair. Yeah. You can't Fair. have it both ways. Either you want to do that or you think it's bad. It can't be both. Come on. Growl okay. at one or two a day. Like give yourself that. A little, little treat. A day. A day. Just a day. It's fine. How many people do you run oh. into in a day? Um, not many. Probably one or two. <laughs> one or two. Well, give them a good growl. They'll appreciate it. You know, it. not all of them are growl worthy, though. Oh, that's true. No, that's I mean, true. I don't want to send mixed signals. No, that's true. All right, no. just growl at the hot ones. It's fine. Still, not brave enough. <laughs> okay, so it's a reference to a Marvel comic character uh, who first appeared in the New Warriors in 1992, Conrad Mack. Uh, he had claws on his fingers and toes, a la Wolverine, and he was a mute. He mm. was also part of a group of superhumans in Vietnam called the Folding Circle. I don't mm. even know. <laughs> oh, sounds mystic. And Indeed. often, <laughs> mystic and full of Asian magic. Okay, mm. and often battled the new warriors before landing in oh, Madripoor. There's no yeah. evidence that he was a snappy addresser, as mm. he is on this show. Well. So... All, that's another one of those like you know X Men. It's like another X Men tie. Here it right. is. But you know what? I'm really just gonna be. I'm really just afraid of the future of this universe, the Marvel universe, amalgamating the Fox universe. Is just going to pull in Wolverine first? I know that's what this points to as well because Wolverine is the strongest connection to Magipur, and yeah. you know uh, we're still kind of you know Hydra's still in the conversation. And, you know, that's not too far of a stretch from Weapon X. And I'm like, oh, man, they're going to do it. They're going to make it Wolverine-centric again. <laughs> well, you, yeah, you have to remember, they're not just appealing to nerds like us because they know we're going to watch it regardless. They have to bring yeah. in 
the Straits, and the Straits know who Wolverine is because Wol, you know, Hugh Jackman just killed it for so many years and so many times, seven times, eight times, whatever it was. They don't have any choice. They kind of have to bring in Wolverine to to then lead everybody else in because you got to leave with a character that everybody knows, even the even the non nerds, right? I'm certainly okay with them bringing in Wolverine separate as long as when it comes time to actually talk about the X Men that he doesn't dominate the X Men. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But I'm certainly I I like you know yeah like you said that. Financially, it makes sense to, you know, mm. put a spotlight on him. For sure it does. Um, I just I just worry about him eclipsing everyone again when it comes mm. time to to really get in that X-Men family dynamic, mm. I guess. So you don't want yeah. the Jennifer Lawrence effect to happen either. So you don't yeah, want one character I, to end up dominating because of the star power of whoever ends up playing them. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I, I do worry about that. And you know, we've had it happen in, in two different sets of timelines with the X-Men now, so they're yeah. they're over two in that sense. So can we have a brief digression here? If you're you're you are now you're Kevin Feige or you're whoever's in charge of casting for Marvel and, and you have to recast one of, if not, I mean right up there with Robert Downey Jr., but one of the best, most tied in actor actor character casting of all time with Hugh Jackman, who who is your who's your guy? Who's who's the new Wolverine that's gonna be able to step in those shoes or those claws, I guess. I, I mean, first I'd ask them to take their shirts off just just to get a baseline, I right? Mean, like it's you have to. I get that have, for sure. I think the first meeting. Sure. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I think if you yeah. asked me back in the day, I might have said perhaps Tom Hardy, mm-hmm. uh, but I I don't think that's realistic now because he's he's Marvel adjacent with Venom, <laughs> right? <laughs> so I don't think that's realistic anymore. And not um, as young a guy anymore either, so. That's true, yeah. yeah. But that's that's the thing with Wolverine. What, what age do you cast at? Because he typically is portrayed as being, I mean, I guess more in his, he always looks like he's in his mid-40s. I, I realize right. he doesn't age, but you're not going to want someone in, your, in their 20s or the early 30s playing Wolverine. He actually has to look fairly haggard, I think. Like, still very attractive, but he's got to be, you know, salt and peppered. But then um, you got to worry about that Ben Affleck effect. Like you don't want him to be already so aged that you're only going to get him for such a brief time period. You've got to yeah. get somebody that's going to be able to go through five or six or seven or even 10 years of movies, right? So I think like the, the optimum age is a tired looking 35 year old. That's nice. where I'm at with Wolverine. So <laughs> let's work from there and work our way out to famous names in that age yep. range. <laughs> yep. Or like, I mean, if it wasn't going to explode the world, you could just get a B.D. Wong who has looked like he's 45 for the last 20 years. B.D. Uh, Wong yeah. is is eternal. <laughs> yeah, there's no, que- there's no question. You see him in those new Jurassic Park things, you're like, what in the fuck is going on with that dude? How is that dude yeah. not aged a day? Yeah, it's amazing. Like, I've been watching Nora from, uh, Nora from Brooklyn with Aquafina, and B.D. Wong plays her dad. And he plays like a second gen uh, immigrant, like or sorry, second. He plays a second gen Chinese, and I was like, he so he doesn't have like an accent. But he's wearing like a beanie or like a toque, and I'm like, what? What is this guy? Like a vampire? He a looks bit. the same age. Like right. I, I think it was was it Law and Order that he was on? Yeah, SVU. <clears throat> yeah, I was like, I, I, I know that. <laughs> I love that we all know that. <laughs> but like he looks the same damn age and looks I amazing. I don't know. Yeah. And if it, if it wasn't for um everybody or the internet, I'm just going to label them the internet because you know, yeah, if, you, if, <laughs> if you if you say themselves <laughs> more than one time in front of a mirror, they might appear in your room. It's true. So um them <laughs> if it weren't for the fact that we couldn't cast recast wolverine as an asian american actor then i would say choose somebody who looks who is able to pull that off in real life and you know you know the, oh like my fellow yellows i don't know how old any of them are right sandra oh she's gonna live till she's a million and lucy still Liu. look yeah lucy Liu. she's like in her in her 50s she's early 50s yeah yeah she was on the drew barrymore show she looks the same damn age that she looked in um in charlie's uh, angels uh, charlie's angels yeah and sex in the city she was technically in sex in the city for a little bit too anyways i digress um (sighs) wolverine he's got to be stunning but also not age for 30 years so we can get longevity out of him yeah 
<laughs> by, the, by the way, uh, Ming Na Wen is another insanely yeah. amazing example of exactly what you're talking. About. I was like, who who is May from Agents of Shield? Who the hell is May? If and she's Fennec on on Mandalorian. Oh yeah, Ming Na Wen. Oh my, fuck yeah. Anyways, sorry. Continue. Yeah. Uh, my my vote's Taron Edger Ed, uh, Taron <gasps> Edgerton. Oh yeah. Oh. My vote. I know he's a little bit on the younger side, Brent, from what you were talking about, and it's not like I don't agree. But he's got the physicality. He's got the look. He's a shorter dude. He's he's broad. He's he's talented. He can act his ass off. He can even sing. Not that Wolverine does a lot of singing, but um, <laughs> after seeing him in Rocket Man and and seeing the range that he has and what he can do, and then the physicality he had in the Kingsman, Kingsman. movies, Kingsman, yeah. I, I I think he's a solid solid choice to bring in as a as a new Wolverine. I think that yeah. that would be great, actually. I think he could pull <laughs> off like really great chops and facial hair too. Mm -hmm. I think he's in his he's in his early thirties, I think. But you could you could probably age him up a bit. You can, but you can beat to. him up a bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. for sure. Yep. But he mm -hmm. he would be a great choice, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Or you, Jeff. Oh, <laughs> I'm 47, man. I'm way past the age. I'm definitely in the Ben Affleck range. I would do two movies and I'd be like, uh, can we go to? 51 and i'm doing this shit i would if robert downey jr i would turn into robert robert downey jr turn what 50 whatever it was and he was like yeah i think i'm i think we're good i think he, I'm done. he was yeah. he was a little gassed in his last movie he absolutely was and by all yeah. means I, I blame him at all no yeah me neither no he put the time Just in so like all right kill my character now yeah. even though i even though i cannot technically be killed i am the eternal soldier I yeah to go <laughs> i'll do old man logan and then i'm leaving this i'm all done <laughs> Oh, do you know what? Speaking of Eternal Soldiers, I really want to know what you think about... Okay. Tangent first. Mm. <laughs> this Wyatt... has been a tangent of a tangent, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> Wyatt Russell. Who... Oh, you're bringing it back. You're bringing it back, actually. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So we're talking about Captain America. <laughs> Let's just talk about the fact that, uh, one, he's going to be U.S. agent, but uh, fake Captain America, played by Wyatt Russell, who, yeah. one is the son of oh, Kurt Chris. Russell and Goldie Hawn. I didn't so, know that, actually. Yep. <laughs> right? So wow. when I found that, I was like, then he has no business being on this. He has no business being on this show, being as unattractive <laughs> as he is. Like, you are the son of two legacies. What are yeah. you doing, sir? What are you doing? Stick to those really Christmas movies with your parents on Netflix. <laughs> the Christmas Chronicles. Stick with your parents. <laughs> He um, has, I, I will defend him a little bit, he has looked better in other properties. I mean, they're really trying to get you to hate him in this, and they're doing a smash-up job of that. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up, because I did actually, we kind of hinted at that at the beginning of the episode, but we should talk about him a little bit, because he has a couple scenes in this episode, and mm -hmm. Jolie, you and I talked last week, he was starting to show signs of a heel turn. And we're, Ooh, we're getting you with the wrestling terms. Look at he you. Nice. He's getting I'm catching him. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah. He he has a couple more signs this week of of, you know, he's not full blown heel yet, but he's certainly in tweener status. Absolutely. He's he, he is, though. You are yeah, dropping he, all the wrestling lingo. This is great. I love it. <laughs> Keep hitting me with he, it. This is perfect. He you know, him and um, is it Battlestar? I can't even yes. remember his. Sign. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, terrible. Him and Battlestar are way behind uh bucky and sam in terms of finding leads on the super soldier serum mm -hmm. and they go and they visit the jail that uh baron zemo's been broken out of and they're they're just looking for for reasons they're looking for legal ways he just kind of so much insinuates it through his dialogue that we're just going to look for reasons as to why it was bucky and sam so mm -hmm. he and he uh i believe at the beginning of the episode too was it the, yeah, it was the beginning of the episode when he was looking for leads. He was, you know, uh, roughing up some German German guards, and he's like, "Do you know who I am?" So he's right. he's really playing into that that status that Baron Zemo later talks about on the plane about idolization of heroes. So right. now now um, John is just he's just reveling in this position, right? And this is a tale as old as time. He's he's talking about absolute power corrupting absolutely. That's really what's going on here. Well, there's uh, even there. a brief scene that that he has with. Uh, Bucky and Sam, where he's like, we should join forces. We should collect her and they're outside or whatever. And they're like, nah, fake Captain America. We're going to do her good. And then he has that little, he's like, then stay out of my way. So you're like, oh, okay. Yes. I see where you're going now. I see how this is going to play out. 
fake fake niceties up front to get him further, but right. he's gonna do what he needs to do to get all of that glory and that fame and those those accolades at the end of the day. Because sure. tr in his defense, and this is this is where it, it he becomes a fascinating heel. He he does <laughs> want to do a good job at his job, but right. he is willing to do dirty things to get there. Right. Because so he understands the legacy that he has to then, the <laughs> shoes he has to fill, he's got to figure, I can't just be an average Captain America because I'll never live up to that. I have to be so far above what Steve did yeah. in a way that I have to, yeah. So you're right. He's got all the weight of the entire world on his shoulders. Is the Could you imagine after everything that Steve did for all that time frame and the icon that he is, there's a, he has a fucking exhibit at the Smithsonian and now you've got to grab his shield, put on a fake outfit and then go be that guy. I actually have some sympathy for him. Like, there's no way you could ever live up to that. Does that mean you get to be a dick about it? No, but I mean, that's a lot of pressure. May I also mm. add that his outfit looks like it's from Zeller's? Like, it's, it's like terrible. a budget version of the it's original cosplay. Captain. Yeah, it's, 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 <laughs> it looks it's like derivative. A cosplay. I've seen better cosplay. My yeah. suit, it looks better than that suit. It's terrible. I think that's also <laughs> intentional, though, to show that he isn't Steve Rogers. You know, he 100%. can't quite live up to it. So mm -hmm. I like that. Yeah. Um, sorry, Jolie, we cut you off there completely. What's up? Oh, no, I, it, it's, it's funny because he requested Cap's actual suit because he's like, I just wanted to get into the role. And it, it was, <laughs> I can't, I can't believe he said that to Who is he, you mean, Tobias you mean from Arrested Development. <laughs> no, he, he said it in the episode. Oh, in the episode. To oh. Bucky and Falcon. And I they both... Wyatt Russell went to the costume department like, can I get the real suit? Because I got to get into character here. And, <laughs> oh, no. Like, yeah. It's like, you know what? As an actor, that's weird. But two, yeah. like. <laughs> and they're like, no, you have to wrestle Chris Evans for it. And we're going to see how that works out for you. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Wait. <laughs> huh? Sorry. Sorry. I also, I also was like, Sorry, what? Wrestle Chris Evans. <laughs> Wrestle Chris Evans, that's correct. Um, sorry, I got hot for a second there. I yep. don't know why. Yeah, I can't imagine. Um where were not you? All kinds of track. Oh, where was I? Oh, yeah, so he he asks or he he tells Bucky and Falcon as if as if this should legitimize him in their eyes. Well, right. I asked if I could have Cap's old suit, you know, just because I wanted to feel like it was, I was, like, Cap. Yeah. Right. And they both were like, get fucked. <laughs> you will never <laughs> be it's already in America. It's already so bad that you have the shield, which is 100% Sam's fault, but yeah. Yeah. we're yeah. not giving you the suit. So, speaking of heel turns, mm. let's talk about Carly's super soldier for a second, because I'm a little confused about what's going on there in terms of where they're bringing her because so we know she is um again she's part of the flag smashers she i, I assume she is the lead flag smasher um we see carly she's this head flex <laughs> <laughs> she's the big oh, you, red flag. anyway you went there so this week we see her and um a few of her buddies raid the global repatriation council headquarters or one of the posts um, and she, you know, we, we don't see the actual action scene, but we see them all tied up and she actually blows them up, which is shocking to me in this episode, because earlier in the episode, we see her, um, basically, um, at someone's deathbed. I, I didn't know it wasn't her mother, but it was someone clearly very close to her. So they were trying to create sympathy for her, but at the same time, she's doing some pretty heinous terrorist action still. So I was... At first, I thought, you know, at the beginning of this series that they were going to paint her as the false villain and that she was going to have an eventual face turn. <laughs> but now I'm not <laughs> I'm not sure after this, you know, this latest episode where she blows up a building full of um, GRC um, affiliates. So I, I don't know what they're doing with her. Does anybody have any idea of what direction they're going? Jolie or I know I don't think you saw that scene yet, Jeff. But I haven't seen that yet. Maybe no. a little. So she's, yeah, she's in Latvia before them. And she's yeah. at the bed of somebody named Danya Mad uh, Madana, Madani. Yeah. Um, she reaches out uh, for for help from somebody to like help. I think that it was the doctor, Nagel, uh, for help to, to revive this woman or help heal her. And obviously um, it falls on deaf ears and this woman dies. And it was the de death of this woman who she feels, uh, sorry, it's a brief scene meant to humanize Carly. Uh, okay. um, 
she's fighting for the people who are often left behind by the heroes of the world. So it's the same story that they wrote for Baron Zemo in like, was it Winter Soul? Wait, which movie Civil was War. it? He, that's it. He was in Civil War, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Before, yeah. So it's like he it's the same MO as Zemo where he's like, well, he even mentions it to them. He's like, Well, have you been back to Sokovia to see the monuments to all the dead people? No, you freaking haven't. Even though you were the heroes saving the day who accidentally, you know, caused all of this death. Um, it's they're sort of writing the same thing for for Carly. Mm. And and that was her turning point to just be full evil. Okay. Uh, where she's decided that she will kill, uh, kill people to accomplish her goals and to stay ahead of the power broker, um, yeah. because it's clear that no one is listening and no one cares, and it it, it usually is th that something as horrible as death, and not being listened to is you know unfortunately what causes this kind of inner protest to happen in somebody. So right. she's decided. She's just full evil now. Okay. Killing. Gotcha. Yeah, no, for story. sure. Because I was I was a little confused at what they were doing there. The writing was up and down. And mm -hmm. like they were trying to have us generate sympathy for her a little bit. You know, throughout a couple episodes, she had some some acts of charity and, you know, sympathy with um, you know, someone on their deathbed. But I I now see that she has gone, she is fully committed to being a heel. <laughs> I was just going to say, it's, if she blew up a building full of people, that seems a little bit irredeemable at that point. So Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I I was a little confused, but I'm glad we worked it out. I know where they're going now. Okay. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so where do we think that they're going after this? Uh, with the introduction of AO, and then I guess just like final thoughts on this episode. I don't know. I don't I, care. I, I'm going to keep watching. <laughs> oh, of course. Yeah. I, I don't really have a, a shit's clue of where they're going next with it. I mean, again, though, I'm my expertise isn't Captain America or any of that lore. So I'm mm -hmm. I'm, I'm probably the wrong person to ask. But I mean, I'm, I'm glad that AO's there. I'm glad that they're tying in Wakanda. Um, I assume she doesn't want to pay Zemo a friendly visit. So that's going to add another interesting um, stroke of dynamics in that this the group that's coming together, you know, between now the four of them, Sam, Bucky, Zemo, and Ao. I think that'll be quite interesting. Um, mm -hmm. But I I don't know where they're gonna go. I feel like the power broker is gonna be a big reveal. Um, eventually, they're gonna come come to a head again with the flag smashers, I suppose. But I I don't know what the desired outcome of the show is gonna be. Like I'm very I'm very confused still a little bit. Yeah, it's all very like high octane level action. Ala Fast and Furious, yeah. more hand-to-hand -hand combat, or less. There was a lot of combat. Like, there's a lot of fighting in those Fast and Furious movies. But, mm. um, but like, <laughs> the writing is on par. Ugh, and I hate to say that. <laughs> but, like, right. uh, I'm only gleaning these things, like, all of these, uh, what, from articles, but also mm. just from multiple watches. Right. Like, I have to watch these episodes multiple times to understand what's going on and, like, to catch something as small as uh, the blip of the phone that shows that they are now marked for death. Right. Like, that yeah. isn't apparent. Do you guys feel like you're at the halfway point? Because yeah. you are. That's the weird part. And yeah. I haven't seen all of the third episode, but it, it seems like there's still a lot of, like, to, trying to fill in the blanks to get the story in place before you start moving into, like it all still feels like first, first act stuff. Mm -hmm. And we're not really even into some of the second act stuff, let alone the third act, but there's only three episodes left. Yeah. It I, seems weird. I don't know. Are they just going to rush and, and can keep this frenetic play, pace and sprint to the end? And are we going to get to a point at the end where it's 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 not to trash WandaVision because everyone loved it, but ultimately there wasn't a lot of, she got a new outfit, she got a new name, and Vision kind of came back, which we knew he would. And and but nothing else. There was really nothing else really of consequence that happened. Is that mm -hmm. what's going to happen here? Are we just going to end the episode in episode six, and it's going to lead into another MCU movie title at some point? But nothing really gets resolved in the. Is that is that what you guys think oh. might happen, or do you want to oh, see yeah. something get tied up with a bow at the end of this? Where I was like, no, Sam is Cap. He's got the shield. He's putting the suit on, and he's going to be Cap moving forward. Or Bucky, whatever. You know what I mean? Like, what would you guys like to see come out of that? Come out of this? Like, you know what I mean? 
Yeah, I suppose I would like some sort of resolution to their, the whole adamant and hesitancy around, you know, taking up a Captain America moniker. So that's going to be some sort of resolution between John and Sam and Bucky at some point. Mm -hmm. uh, they're going to have to have that conversation, whether it's verbally or physically. Um, some sort of resolution with the Flag Smashers, I guess. But even then, I'm not totally invested in that. And right. I still have a ton of questions. And then something about the power broker and why they wanted to refinance the super soldier serum. I suppose that's the other main question that I, I think needs to be resolved for this to be right. successful. Yeah. There's got to be some sort of means to an end for why they wanted that to happen. Right. Yeah. And I think uh, they've they've offered us so many kind of glimpses into the comic books uh, or the source material that I I want to see it go in like another now I want to see it go in another completely different direction where it's like uh, and we we talked about it before it's named the show is named after Falcon his name is first on the yes. bill so this is primarily it should be a show about the Falcon they introduce Isaiah Bradley um, I want them to uh, oh, sorry and then they introduce the doctor who initially um, is named as the doctor who created or tested on um, Black Americans in uh, Captain America Truth, right? So it's like he was technically responsible for creating Cap and Isaiah Bradley. So if we're going to introduce all these other things, I would like to see it go in that direction. It's weird that they have the whole like Marvel monster of the week sort of thing that happens right. concurrently. Right. Um, so it's like this, there's all this really cool like in real life stuff and then there's all this Marvel stuff. Right. And they have to kind of marry the two and mm -hmm. is it working? I would say sure. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. each episode is 50 minutes and they really make good use of those 50 minutes, but was is the episode good or coherent or it feels very transitional? Right. Yes, it absolutely does. Yeah. And I feel like we need more than six episodes to kind of uh, lay all this shit out. Because like, neither a lot one of, of you mentioned Zemo, obviously, funnily enough, because it just yeah. seems like he just kind of got chucked in there. Like they felt bad about his storyline within Civil War because it didn't really make a whole lot of sense and was kind of like all over the place. And so yeah. they're like, well, Daniel Brohl, we still have him under contract. We're going to throw him in here and he's awesome. But what's he doing? Is he gonna? Is it gonna lead anywhere? Is he just gonna go back to prison when it's done and we just forget that he exists again? Is he gonna be a player moving forward? Like. Yeah, yeah, and I, I feel like this is going to be the show that makes the villain, the villains who are kind of championing these like social issues and injustices, maybe that hopefully this is what the show is about. It's about like the little guy that has to do what they have to do in order to get uh, what they need. I mean, now we find out, though, that Baron Zemo isn't a little guy. He's actually like you know, a big billionaire guy, but he's part of the problem. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's part of the problem, but he initially was fighting for the same thing. Carly is fighting for, um, you know, I just want to see Sam get that boat. <laughs> Sam yeah. and his sister really just like need to get that loan or whatever. Like. You're right. A lot of story elements, a lot of plot threads have started out. You only got three episodes to tie all of it together. It's I, gonna I be hope a... they can pull it off going to be a real rat race <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. i don't think i assume this will not stick the same landing as wandavision did mm -mm. but i will stick a landing because that one wandavision definitely had a landing but it wasn't like great <laughs> no i would actually argue their last episode was their weakest i would argue yeah yeah, <clears throat> yeah. an interesting show that ended in a big like you know a particle battle with cgi mm. and the same mm -hmm fucking bullshit that every marvel property ends in and they really introduce something awesome and in a way they've introduced something awesome with falcon and the winter soldier where it's just like really quiet it started out as a weird like or potentially a really cool like buddy cop style uh drama action show and maybe it'll end up being a drama I can't tell, and I don't think the show knows either, to be honest. No, that's the, the the vibe I'm getting to. And I know those two dudes are, like, super close in real life, and I know they get along really well, and I still need to see that chemistry on screen between the two of them, and I haven't really seen it yet. 
I mean, a little bit in the stare down scene with the with the with the psych. But I mean, other than that, this whole show centers around it hinges on the chemistry between those two. You called it the Falcon and the Winter Soldier for a reason. You can't just trade on those names and what they've meant up until now. You have to have those two have great chemistry and have as many scenes with those two interacting in a great way as possible to make the show work. And I feel like it hasn't really, it hasn't really happened yet. No, they have mm -hmm. they, they have little flashes of it here and now and then. I'm like, oh, yeah. they could do something with this. Like they had, you know, actually the one good example from the beginning of this episode was uh, Bucky narrating how he basically broke Zemo to prison, and he's telling right. this to Sam, and Sam's like, yes. you did not, you yes. know, like. That was that was almost there, you know. They had the yep. right idea, but yep. it didn't quite land. Yeah, yeah. So again, lots, lots of lots of work to do for three episodes, man. We'll see what happens. Ugh. Yeah. Yeah. Well, do you know what? Thank you, Jeff, for joining us. Hey, anytime yeah. at all, guys. This has been absolutely a blast. You two yeah. are wonderful to talk to, and you guys know your stuff. So uh, uh, yeah, that's good. No, 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 <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. I mean, you guys were dropping comic book references and wrestling references. This has been great. Yeah. <laughs> Brent always gets the boys with the re the, uh, the wrestling references. Of course. I'm, of course. I'm ready for WrestleMania season, baby. Yeah, let's. Next yeah, week. absolutely. Yeah, for sure. A hundred percent. I'm old school. I haven't watched in a lot of years, but when I watched, I was I was deep in. So yeah. yeah. All sure. right. Well, well. Again, uh, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, us will time. have you on for sure. Wonderful. Yeah. Be on the lookout again. Let the people know where they can find you, follow you, obsess about what you do, Jeff. Oh yeah, absolutely. So uh, it is Messiah Complex Cosplay, and you can find me across all social media, uh, mostly on Instagram, somewhat on Facebook. Uh, I have Twitter; it's a bit of a graveyard, but uh, Vero, you name it. If you just type in Messiah Complex Cosplay in Google, you're you're going to find me in some way, shape, or form. So come and have a look, and yeah, all my bookings and everything else are up there too. So. Birthday parties, movie premieres, events, you name it, I'll be there. And uh, I have uh, over 20 cosplays that I can bring out and, and a whole list of those things. Some of them are kid-friendly, some of them not so much. So just reach out and I'm happy to talk about whatever you need to talk about as far as that goes. So, Cool. Yeah. I wish I could have more parties, adult right. parties. That I could just uh -huh. uh -huh. This guy just shows, shows up in like a Negan costume to demand... 50% of all of our shit and then all kill one of us. Right. That would be amazing. It can happen, Julie. It can happen. You just give me a call. I will be there in a heartbeat. I told you anything for you. So you bet. Well, yeah. we got to work on producing a body for you to hide first. Exactly. I also want to thank my wonderful co-host, Harvey Brent. Yes. Thank you. I'm, we're getting back into the regular swing of things. Thanks for mm -hmm. always steering the ship and keeping things afloat when I have extracurricular matters to attend to that's all good maybe we'll maybe jeff can like co-host when you're gone sometimes oh that would be wonderful i could never replace every friend but i would be more than no. happy to step in <laughs> and, and half build his shoes so i will um, be the u.s agent to his captain america no problem with uh, i will be the wyatt russell that is <laughs> for seven in a heartbeat i will quietly shade you throughout the entire episode um yeah so you can send us great mail to full volume pod at gmail.com you can find us on social media at comic book syndicate or comic syndicate uh that's instagram and twitter facebook respectively um hashtag full volume pod until next time keep it loud Volume. Like, hey, yo. <laughs>